Can you tell me a little bit about the Barefoot College? Uh, why Barefoot? Why College? It's Barefoot because symbolically many men and women walk barefoot in India. It's symbolic of traditional knowledge and skills which are not respected, un, uh, underutilized, not recognized, not even applied, especially for their own solutions. It's a college because it's a place for learning and unlearning. It's a college where the teacher is the learner and the learner is the teacher. And it's a college with a difference because we don't give any paper qualifications and degrees after learning. Because it's the community that must certify whether they've learnt what they should have learnt in the Barefoot College. So it's a community interaction. It's a community endorsement. The community endorsement is much more important than a university or a college's certificate. Because it's the community that this woman serves. It's not serving anybody else. So that is the, I think that is the key element of the Barefoot approach that makes it unique. And do you think it's possible to bring that approach to Western countries? No. Develop? Why? Because you're so hung up on certification. You have a vested interest in people being certified and getting a paper degree. And it's behind a paper degree, people hide incompetence. Also competent, but largely incompetent. Even after a paper degree, you're unemployable in many parts of the world, including India. You don't know your subject. You've got a degree, but you don't know your subject. You can't work with your hands. So what are you worth? So if we wanted to bring the principles of the Barefoot College uh, to Portugal, you say it's not possible? It's they won't allow it. They won't allow it? Even the youth might want it, but the elders won't allow it. Because, it's a, it's, because it's a threat to them. It's a? It's a threat to them. Bringing a barefoot model into the first and second world is a threat to the whole educational system. I am laughing at the whole educational system. I'm taunting them. I'm saying, tell me what is wrong with the barefoot college. Why won't it work? But they won't allow it. So uh, it gets me wondering, why do you come to, uh, for example, to Portugal and bring your example? If because I say there's an alternative possible. Which is? The barefoot model. There is an alternative that must be shown to them. It's not an only one way of doing it. There is another way and it's working. And we are showing that it's working. So think it out. Which, make a choice. Which one would you want to do? Which one do you think will work? Which one will give more people jobs? Which one will give more people dignity? Which one will give more people self-respect and self-esteem? All this the Barefoot College does naturally without forcing it non-violently. We need, we need shops in Portugal. No, it won't work. It won't work. But they won't allow it. They won't allow it. I'm very sad with that. I'm not it's sad because, I'm not I, sad because I, think the, I think the barefoot model is much more required in the third and fourth world because the third and fourth world is being destroyed by Western aid. And Western aid is bringing a model into the third and fourth world, which is very dangerous. And the bear, that's where the barefoot model is challenging, the Western model. The Western model is top down. Western model is someone who, come, who goes to Stanford, Oxford University, and they think they can solve poverty below. Nonsense. We don't know anything about rural poverty. But still, we believe. That's where the money comes. So the barefoot model is showing you can do it less expensively, more effectively, more accountably, more ownership. We should be doing that uh, for a long time ago, shouldn't we? Western societies. Yeah, but you have, you have come to a, a position where you accept failure. I'm not willing to accept failure. Really? <laughs> A few months ago, we had uh, the first uh, failure congress in, in Cascais, where um, the main message was to accept failure as part of the process. And yet, we do this, and yet we do the same thing. We know it's going to fail. We know the money is going to go waste. And yet we do the same thing because we don't offer an alternative. We don't show an alternative can work. Sad. 
sad. If you take money from the, from the World Bank, you take one dollar of money and ten dollars of headache you get because of consultants coming and people are writing reports and waste of time. I'll never go to the World Bank. I'll never allow the World Bank to come to me because they, there's nothing they can learn from the Barefoot College that we don't know already. They, are, they have already come to you? Try to not allowed. Not allowed. They're not allowed to come. The Barefoot College also invests and lives in the other people. We were talking about that. Um, can you tell me uh, what is their potential? Because sometimes we have... Potential of? The, the, the older people. Oh, the older people are the mainstream of, the, of society. And if you go to villages anywhere in the world, it's only the very older and the very young who are staying. All the middle level have gone, looking for jobs. So why are you investing in them? Invest in the older people. We will make sure that the skills remain, they'll transfer it, they'll be there, and they have become perfect role models for people. I mean, never have you, did you ever think that a grandmother can become a role model in a village? Impossible. You don't think that here? No, think that here, you don't think that in Africa. But at least in Africa, we can change things around and show that another way is possible. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that uh, we could, in Portugal, if we want to apply just um, uh, one of the barefoot principles, we should um, believe more in the other people? You do think? you think it would be a way to change? Of course, you can start small. There's no harm in starting small. But be consistent, don't give up just because you fail once. We, give, we tend to fail, we tend to give up very fast. Because, you know, the higher you go in terms of qualification, the less courage you have to try anything new. Because you don't want to fail. You don't want to show you failed. So you don't do anything. Yeah. How would you position the serial conferences among international debate circuits? We should have much more debate. We should have much more interaction. Uh, for instance, I would rate this better than the World Economic Forum. I've been to the World Economic Forum in Davos five times, and it's not very really exciting. It's an old boys club, and all the billionaires get together. They don't want a social entrepreneur coming in and telling them what to do. Now it has changed. 2002 when I went, they were totally hostile. 2007, they were open to social entrepreneurship. So I think that's a Good sign. And I think a conference like this should have many more social entrepreneurs. You don't have enough. You only have too many university professors. You must have more social entrepreneurs who are practitioners on the ground. Mm -hmm. That, I think, would be a lesson that this conference can learn from. Okay. And if anyone wants help, I can send you some fantastic speakers for the conference. Fantastic. <laughs> Next yeah. edition. Thanks. Yes. And last question. Uh, how do you evaluate the fact that this is a municipality who is promoting these conferences? Uh, this is such a good idea, and I think you should carry it on. And the municipality to do that is something new. This is innovative. This is out of the box, and this is something that is a good attempt. And I think you should mix the two. You should have many more from the south and not too much from the north. If you want to make it international, you should have many, many more charismatic speakers from the south who are so good and this will make an interaction much more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.